Welcome everybody and thank you for joining us today at this event um, where uh, Community Energy England has joined with, um, with Unity, um, uh, a key member of ours, um, and Unity is going to be running through their new uh, volunteering platform with you today to help you understand um, how it works and what the benefits will be to you. So um, yes, thank you all for joining and um, showing up promptly and, and, and uh, as you may well know, uh, I'm uh, Philip Coventry from Community Energy England. Sorry, I should have been just done that at the very beginning, but um, I'm Head of Operations at Community Energy England. Um, I know many of you already, I'm sure. Um, so thank you for being here and please do introduce yourselves in the chat. Um, we'd like this to be a kind of a nice informal event where you can also sort of meet, meet people and connect up. Um, you might see people's names on the participants list that you, uh, you haven't chatted to for a while. So um, do introduce yourself there in the chat, tell us which organisation you're from um, and you can kind of uh, catch up with people there if you'd like to. Um, I'm just going to run through a little bit um, about CEE to start with um, and the kind of outline of the day uh, and then we'll get going and I'll hand over to Unity. Um, so uh, as you may know the call is being recorded, hopefully you all saw the notification of that and you don't have to show your screen if you don't want your face on the recording. Um, and the, uh, the session afterwards will be added onto YouTube so you can uh, show other people if you want to um, or have a look at it again. Um, so yeah, just a, a quick one to explain Community Energy England. So we were founded in 2014 by practitioners within the community energy sector to act as the voice of the sector, create a network across the country. That network's grown to over 270 organisations. Um, actually, I should have a, a slide for that. Uh, Uh, and all our work is intended to clear obstacles, create connections between practitioners and stakeholders in the community energy sector and facilitate the work organisations, uh, thereby benefiting the sector as a whole. That's what our purpose is. Um, and we, as you probably know, we act as the voice of the sector and we have um, a, a really dedicated team that works to make politicians, national and local government officials and network operators aware of community energy benefits, needs, opportunities and policy obstacles and lobby for supportive policy and regulations. Um, you can find out more about that and our network as a whole uh, on, on our website. Um, and then just to mention as well that the, uh, oh wait, that the event that we're running today and that you've attended is part of Community Energy Fortnight. Hopefully you've seen a lot of the, the buzz on social media, you've seen the things on their website and the, the broader uh, range of events that have been running during the fortnight. Um, this is the second to last day, so um, uh, you're well done for sort of uh, sticking with us and, and finding this event. And there's going to be another tomorrow about um, ventilation um, and how to retrofit for that. So uh, if that's kind of up your street, then do join us for that one as well. Um, there's still also lots going on on social media and other announcements and our conference will be opening tomorrow. So Community Energy Fortnite um, is a nationwide campaign. Um, it's all about kind of vis vis visibility of the sector, connect, making new connections. And uh, this year we've been focusing on sharing skills um, between different organisations of the sector. So yeah, thank you to Unity for participating in the Fortnite with us um, by hosting this event. Um, so uh, just lastly, I'm going to move on to just talk a little bit about the broader sector. So as you well know, um, we cover the whole sector in England um, as the membership organisation and the network. So one of the things that we do in that is to kind of do some annual research called State of the Sector, in which we look at um, the, the, the way the sector has changed year to year and try to present that information to you. That The last report that we have is available on the website if anyone wants to look at it. Um, and so the, the context today is obviously about volunteering. And so I, I just wanted to kind of introduce with some, some numbers and things. So uh, in 2021, which is the last year that we have the data for, because we paused this year, um, there were 3,025 volunteers across the sector. Um, and 70% of, of the sector's activity and action is, is volunteer power. So volunteers are a huge part of community energy, um, not just obviously in the name, the sense that um, Community energy is born from particular places by people who live there, um, but also that those people are the ones who make things happen. Um, they they kind of bring about the action and, and the impact of the community energy sector. Um, thinking about that and, and the kind of changing landscape of the sector, volunteering is a particular um, 
uh, issue in terms of the capacity that the sector has to achieve things because whilst it's people powered and that's very clear um, that the, the need for volunteers, the need for that capacity also does forward the sector back in terms of having a bigger impact. So we, we ask about the, the different challenges, the barriers that organisations face and we have found that um, capacity is particularly an issue for electricity generation projects. Um, and what we found in 2021 was that a lot of groups, new groups, uh, there were in fact no new groups who said that they were starting up to look at an electricity generation. Um, and that was particularly related to capacity. So uh, capacity and time was the biggest sec the biggest barrier in the sector, 17% um, of organisations. And there's, there's a lot of barriers. It's, it's a challenging thing to do, community energy. So there's a lot of different things that can, can hold it back. Um, Obviously, as you will also know, there's a huge range of skills and things that are needed for, for to make a community energy organisation get up and running and then operate successfully. So, so it's not just a, a particular type of volunteer who can kind of um, do one thing that's needed. It's it's the whole range of, of activities from um, being out on the ground, talking to people about energy all the way up to um, sort of doing governance and oversight of how you run an organisation. So that's the broader landscape in a, in a nutshell um, and that's a good moment to hand over now to unity to to uh, take you forward into their platform thank you very much thank you phil i'll just share the slides two seconds shouldn't take that long well are you okay to stop sharing thank you Perfect. Amazing. So over to Michaela, if that's okay. Fab. Thank you. Thank you, Philip, for a wonderful introduction. Um, so I'm just going to give a super quick overview on Unity and why we're kind of supporting the community energy sector to kind of set the scene for um, the platform. So um, for those of you that don't know, um, my name is Michaela Quire. I'm head of Unity. Um, and Unity is a joint venture between Octopus Energy and Mid Counties Cooperative. Um, we're very fortunate that we currently work with about a third of the community energy sector. Um, and the kind of the core, the bread and butter of what we do is supporting groups via power purchase agreements. Um, so we currently have um, over 200. PPAs with various community energy groups um, and that's across community owned wind, solar, hydro assets and I think probably the most crucial thing to share with you all today is just to kind of re-emphasize that if it's if you've got a community owned asset that's generating power we will provide you with a PPA um, regardless of the size of the project whether it's nine kilowatts or nine megawatts we believe in kind of that community energy needs to form a key role in the, the energy transition so that's why we offer a wholesale market reflective price regardless of size so if that's of interest please get in touch um, and then obviously as mentioned you know we work with a number of groups up and down the country and um, we're in a fortunate position where we get to understand kind of challenges and you know what's on the horizon so from speaking to a number of groups um, a common theme was occurring that during the kind of construction phase um, of an energy generation project ahead of doing a community share raise there's a bit of a, a kind of a stumbling block um, in terms of accessing affordable finance so we've launched um, a short-term loan facility and when I say short term it can be you know six to nine months so not too short um, and the idea is to provide um, you know affordable finance to groups at that construction phase so we've got a pot of about 1.5 million so um, we recently lent a million pound to Bristol Energy Co-op for their rooftop solar array and um, so if any groups are looking um, for kind of short-term loans we've got some projects on the horizon again please do get in touch and I think uh, lastly um, to mention we also have a grant facility called Power and Communities Fund um, so far, we've distributed 35k to 13 groups. Uh, we're going to be opening up the next round of grants, hopefully in the coming months. So the only kind of condition is that you're an affiliate of Unity in some shape or form, um, for instance, through a PPA, etc. So again, um, keep an eye out for that. So if anyone wants to get in touch with those aspects, please do. Um, you can check out our website, socials, um, or just, you know, good old email. So um, Thank you very much. Hopefully that sets the scene a little bit for kind of Unity's involvement in the community energy space. And um, we're super excited about the, the platform and we've really listened to kind of various feedback from the groups. And this session is to just gather more feedback. This is at the early stages of launching the platform. So all feedback is welcome. Um, so thank you very much. And I'll hand over to Amelia. Thank you, Michaela, for that overview. That was great. Um, so hello, I'm Amelia, Community Renewables Engagement Lead at Unity. 
and I've been working with the team to develop Community Energy Connect and we are very excited to be sharing it with you today as a soft launch. Over the next hour, or just under an hour now, we will be setting the context as to why we've created this platform, having a deep dive into a demonstration, hearing from a very lovely volunteer called Lot, and also showcasing how you can get involved. But before we do that, it would be great to hear about how you've landed here today. So if you could post in the chat to whether you're a community energy group looking for a volunteer, or maybe you're a budding volunteer wanting to help the sector, or are just interested in something that you saw in the communications that's come up, that would be amazing. We'll just give a few seconds for that. And Michaela, are you okay to let me know what comes through the chat just because I can't see whilst I'm presenting? Thank you. Yes. Have you got any things coming through? Yeah, we've just got one person saying, yeah, you need a volunteer. And we've yes. got a volunteer as part of the chat. Amazing, cool. Well, hopefully we've got a few different sides, a few different perspectives, because that's all the pieces of the puzzle. Um, so really great to hear from all perspectives in this, um, yeah, in this next few, maybe like 40 minutes, 40 or 50 minutes. Um, so we'll start off by going into why we decided to create this platform. And as Philip mentioned, time and capacity is one of the main challenges groups face in community energy. And we really wanted to find out a little bit more about what this meant and in a more granular detail. So we performed some research in one-to-ones and focus groups. And I believe some of you are on this call today. So if you are, again, thank you so much for taking part in that. It's been insanely useful and insightful. So we spoke with groups across the UK that are big, small, medium size, and are all at different stages in their journey. And the results, there were three main findings. And if these three things have a solution, then that will immediately unlock lots of time and capacity for community energy groups. They are finance, knowledge sharing and volunteers. Now, as Michaela mentioned, we've got our Kickstarter loan and powering communities fund. So whilst the sphere of finance is never truly cracked until all groups get the finance they need, we wanted to focus on an area that perhaps hasn't had much attention before, which is the engagement side as well. In terms of knowledge sharing, Community Energy England have a wonderful platform called Lumio. If you're a community energy group and haven't heard about it, definitely recommend you Google it, and I'm sure they'll be up for having a chat and walking it through with you. For volunteering, there's not really, in the space at the moment, a dedicated community energy volunteering platform in terms of encompassing community energy as a whole. And as we all know, community energy can take so many different shapes. It can be wind, it can be solar, hydro, it can be focused on campaigning on the ground, um, generation assets, or maybe retrofitting and energy advice. And this platform really encompasses all of that together. We also found that through general volunteering websites, community energy ads tended to get a little bit lost although it deserves to shine so brightly because it can make so much impact. We also found that when attending events, because that's a big part of what we do at Unity, is going into spaces both with community energy groups and those who aren't naturally in the sector too, that whilst we were talking about community energy and educating people on it, there maybe isn't such a clear call to action. You could say, why don't you set up a group, join a group or invest in a share offer? but maybe they're not at the stage to invest and maybe they're not at the stage of creating their own group. And we've heard from a few different volunteers that sometimes due to time and capacity restraints from groups, um, they might not get a reply from community energy groups. So a volunteering platform immediately unlocks a potential hundreds or maybe even thousands of people um, who know the true power and value of community energy. And that is essentially how Community Energy Connect was born. Essentially, it's a platform connecting skilled people to community energy groups. And I want to put a real emphasis on skilled people. There's often a preconception that with volunteers, they might not have the skills or the value 
um, to add lots and lots of benefit to charitable organisations or maybe community energy groups. However, there are so many people who have enough skills and who can get straight into volunteering opportunities, and we want to make sure that's really clear. So we're tackling this in three different ways. The first is through our parent companies. So at Unity, we are half owned by Octopus Energy and half owned by Mid Counties Cooperative. And as you can imagine, there is a wealth of knowledge and experience within both of those organisations, ranging from energy industry knowledge, application, finance, HR, and cooperative business models, which as you can imagine, would be really, really helpful in the community energy space. So we will be actively encouraging people and colleagues from both organisations to join this platform. The second way we are tackling this is through pro bono work. So say there's an organisation who have dedicated time set aside to help a charitable organisation or a community energy group. The way it will work on this platform is if you're a community energy group, you will post on the platform. We will be searching through these for key themes and then actively searching for people and firms who align with those skills. And just as an example, we are currently in conversation with an incredible environmental agency who specialise in energy and financial planning. And they are very keen to get involved, get signed up onto this platform and help community energy groups such as yourselves. And this can take many different shapes again. So if you're looking for maybe marketing support, we can think, oh yeah, we know these individuals or we're connected with these firms that we can encourage to join this platform. So that's how we would tap into the pro bono side. And then thirdly, obviously there's lots of enthusiastic volunteers in general. So there's lots of individuals going on their journey, learning about community energy and falling in love with it, which I'm sure almost everybody on this, in this call has done as well. And they all want to get involved. And just as we need all skills to help fight the climate crisis, we need all skills to help grow community energy. It's worth mentioning that at the moment, this platform is purely a matchmaking platform. However, we recognize and we realize that the management of these volunteers can sometimes be a bit of a pain point. And this is something that we are absolutely exploring for future development and seeing about how we can embed this into our platform. So currently it's matchmaking, but we have um, thoughts in future development to make it into a more management platform as well. And so enough of um, listening to me talking live, <laughs> we'll now go on to a demo of a recording of me talking and hopefully the sound and the video all match up. But this is essentially the soft launch of the platform where you can have a look at all the features if you are a volunteer on this call, the demo is catered more towards community energy groups, but just pretend it's saying volunteers and it's essentially the same thing um, and it should follow quite nicely. So I will go on to the next screen. Hopefully you can hear um, the sound. Let me know if you can't, but hopefully it's all smooth. Hello, welcome to Community Energy Connect. Through this recording, I'll be showing you a glimpse into this platform so you can get a feel for its true features. But before we play around, I'd like to mention that this is a platform to help you, community energy groups that are doing amazing work. This is a soft launch, so we will be developing, editing and moulding the platform to however best suits you. If there are elements you think should be added, any improvements, if anything should be taken away, post it in the feedback channel as this is your platform. So. Let's get stuck in. Once you've signed up, and we'll be running through this later, this is where you'll land, on the discovery page. You'll get channels to the left of you, just here, and I'm in the way at the bottom corner. And if you ever get lost, click into these and they'll tell you exactly what to do. Especially the Community Energy Groups Get Started channel, this will give you a nice little welcome journey. And to the right is a guiding tick box section. These are the steps you need to follow to become matched with a volunteer. So let's go through them. First, you'll start by filling out your profile through here. Secondly, you'll post an opportunity. So if you click on that section, click on the template here, copy this, paste it into the share what's on your mind section and edit it and post just as Connie from Com Croydon Community Energy has done here. And we can see uh, an example of how this works 
with a volunteer interrupting. Secondly, if you would like to search for volunteers that are already on the platform, if you click on the post your skills and find a volunteer section, you can search through volunteers that have already signed up and have clearly displayed their skills, their experiences, um, their capacity, their location. Some people might upload a CV. So it's real emphasis on the skills that they have, what capacity, what location. So it's really easy for you to see if it would be a good match and whether it will work with your community energy group and your opportunity. If you didn't want to do that and you wanted a more direct approach, you could type in the search volunteers bar at the top. Maybe you needed some marketing support. So marketing. And if you click here, you'll find somebody who has marketing experience and would like to volunteer. And if you do find a volunteer through this platform, it's really important to us that we know if you've done this or not. So if you do, please go onto the Successful Connections channel and click here on this box. This will just let us know the success of the platform, if it's working and keep it as a two-way conversation between us and you. Another extra part, which is very exciting, is where I am in the bottom left-hand screen. So I'll just move myself. And it's the courses section. We really want to ensure that this platform is the hub for volunteers, is a space for them to find opportunities, but also to grow and upskill themselves. So currently we have an intro to community energy course. And this is where they can learn about the basics of community energy, how it works, the community benefit, community energy in the wider energy sphere. And the aim is with future development that there might be skills that you're after in your volunteers that we could provide a course for. So for example, maybe some basic financial work or maybe a social media plan, social media course, whatever best works. Our aim is to create a course to suit that on here. And then depending on how you find the platform, as I mentioned, it would be great to get your feedback. Any feedback you have, positive, negative, anything would be very, very useful in here. And then if you would like to, you're welcome to invite another community energy group to the network. If you figure out that they're trying to look for a volunteer, then there's a simple link that you can send them and that would be super useful both for us and also for them and this is basically an <laughs> overall of the platform it's super simple we wanted to keep it really stripped back we're still putting on the branding um so the branding and logo isn't going to be a c in a um gray logo however that will change but that's essentially it and in terms of future development for this platform we would love to work towards the stage where we have capacity to have check-ins with you and volunteers, maybe have verified ticks with volunteers so that we know which ones have done maybe certain training or courses. And yeah, there's also an app that you can download called Mighty Networks and you can log on into the Community Energy Connect network as a community. We recommend using this on desktop, but it's always handy just in case you're on the move and want to try out the um, the app as well. But yeah, that's an overview and we'll have an opportunity for questions later on in the session. Thank you so much. Perfect. So that was an overview and a little reveal of the platform. Hopefully it's got you a little bit excited. Um, and I would love to now welcome Lot, who is an amazingly skilled volunteer um, working for Octopus Energy and who would love to get involved in the community energy movement. And she'll explain how maybe Community Energy Connect might help her. So Lot, over to you. Thanks, Amelia. Um, yeah, hi everyone. I'm Lot. It's lovely to be here with you. Um, just a tiny bit more about my background. So, as uh, Amelia mentioned, I'm a manager with Octopus Energy in our renewables team, which is where I am right now <laughs> in our office. Um, and we're working to build more renewables in communities that want them. Um, so, we aim to ensure that locals benefit through offerings such as our fan club. Um, but importantly, as part of this role, I've learned a lot about what's needed to develop generation projects 
and also some of the challenges that can crop up as well. So I've been involved in activities like financing, navigating planning, grid connections, engaging locals and so on. Um, and we're still working through a lot of these barriers, both as a business and a sector. But I've learned a lot in that process. And obviously, it's such an important area to be working in. So hopefully that gives a little bit of background about what I could bring as a potential volunteer. Um, just going back a little, I met Michaela in the office last year, and that was the first time I'd actually heard about community energy. Uh, I have to say I was honestly immediately gripped, and this has led me to consider more about what I could do in my community. Um, so she's asked me to come along today just to talk about my experience of starting to seek a group to volunteer with. Um, so a couple of months ago, I contacted several groups. I googled around and found the email contacts from the different websites. I contacted maybe four or five groups. Uh, and so far, I've had back from one, <laughs> which isn't to blame anyone. People are busy, possibly on holiday or simply didn't need the help. Um, but it feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. That's when I was introduced to Amelia, who told me all about Connect, which was genuinely a very well-timed and exciting meeting. Um, and I think some of the key benefits um, of Connect as a volunteer is that it immediately feels like a hub and a wider community in itself. There are a whole array of brilliant organisations, some of you on this call today, and people across the country doing really innovative work in energy right now. But at the moment, it can still not feel very visible to the general public. But with a platform like Connect, we can showcase the different groups operating and the connections and conversations happening in real time, which can create an amazing buzz and makes it feel like a really attractive and welcoming environment to be a part of. There's also the possibility to interact with other volunteers and share knowledge between people doing similar roles across the country. So really a whole network of collaboration and knowledge sharing all in one place. Uh, hopefully we've got some other people on the call that are interested in volunteering and I've just sold it. But we've got a little demo now of what it was like for me to sign up and use the platform as a volunteer. So if we can roll with the video, please, Amelia. I wasn't as prepared as Amelia, so I didn't do a pre-recorded video over the top, but this is me just looking at the welcome information for volunteers and following um, the profile to fill out my bio, a little bit more about what I could offer. Location, things like that, which were really helpful to know. And same again, there's a little checklist down the side that makes it really easy to complete all of the tasks needed. So here I'm just browsing the opportunities that have been posted seen an amazing one from Connie which could fit my role so I've commented on there letting her know that I would possibly be interested then I did the steps that Amelia laid out just to share what my skills are and introduce myself in the forum sorry this is my slow timing <laughs> Um, and it's important as well, you can hashtag the different skills and you can add new ones there. So you don't need to worry if it's not in the main list, you can just type some in, which makes it really easy to find others. Again, a bit about how often you could volunteer and where. And you can see a little notification there as well as Connie responded to my comment. So we can follow through that notification and get back to her. So really, it's quite dynamic and there's instant feedback about people interacting. Here, we're just having a look through those courses that Amelia called out, which are really aimed at the volunteers. So some basic information about community energy and different areas and focus areas that we might be involved in. And there's also the messaging function here. So Connie and I can arrange a chat or a meeting just to talk about how we can next get involved. giving obviously very positive feedback, <laughs> but it was genuinely easy to use. And Connie and I successfully connected, so we reported that back. Oh, I think that's it. Thank you so much, Amelia, back to you. 
Amazing. Thank you for sharing that lot. Um, it was really useful and I'm sure you'll be grabbed by so many different community energy groups within a short period of time because I'm sure everybody would love to have you. Um, but hopefully that was a good overview and a good deep dive into what the platform looks like and how to use it. But how do you get involved? As we mentioned, for community energy groups, sign up, post an opportunity, then we can search through those, we can search through the themes and align with people and organisations that match them. For volunteers, the same, but post your skills and have a look at the opportunities that are posted. Obviously, give feedback. As I mentioned, this is a two-way platform. It's something that can be moulded with us all together. We're so up for collaboration with it. We're really up for having discussions, seeing what works with you, what doesn't work, any ideas, any slight changes. This is exactly what this platform is for. And then share with your friends, your colleagues, other community energy groups, would they be interested in it? And we really want to make sure that the journey is as smooth as possible. So if you come up with any barriers or if you'd like to talk anything through before you join or even um, whilst you're joining and sharing the screen, my email's just on the um, slide there. If you want to jot it down, just drop me a message and we can jump on a call. As I said, we want to make sure it's as clean and as slick as possible for you. So we're very excited to say that you can sign up to the platform as of now, um, which is great. And you can do this with one of two ways. The first way, which will always be here, is on unity.coop. So www.unity.coop. And if you head to our take action tab, you'll see at the bottom, there's a question saying, are you a budding volunteer? So if you're a volunteer, there's a link just under there. And if you're a community energy group, scroll a little bit further down and you'll get the link for you there. It's really important you follow those dedicated links because you'll get set journeys um, for you, depending on what type of person you are and how you're coming to this. But also, as we can launch this to you now, um, Michaela, would you be able to paste the um, links into the chat, please? There should be a couple of links coming your way and you can click onto them straight away if you're super excited and want to get involved um, as soon as this call is over um, or have a little explore, they'll be there for you. Now, it's important to note that this is a gift from unity to the community energy movement. So it is free and it will always be free. We have worked with a third party organization to get this platform up and running, which means that we've integrated their sign up journey. And as you can see here, it kind of looks like you might have to put some card details in with the wording payment and due today. However, I can assure you, you don't need to put any details in, any card details or anything. It is free. You just confirm access and you'll go straight through to the platform. So don't worry about that and don't let that be a barrier. It's free and it will always be free. So that's essentially an overview of the platform and we've left quite a lot of time for questions, any feedback you immediately have, because as we mentioned, that's one of the main areas for us. Um, and we'll maybe start the questions with Community Energy Connect specific ones. And then if there's any about Unity in general, if we have time, we can get onto those later. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was really, really interesting and we would love your feedback, um, yeah. If you've got any questions, thank you. Um, just before we go on to questions, just to add um, that we, as Amelia mentioned, we've launched this today and we wanted to launch it to the community energy group sector first. So if you do log on and you don't see, you know, hundreds of volunteers, don't be disheartened. That was the plan to launch um, to yourselves first, look for themes and then kind of focus on kind of uh, recruiting volunteers after. So, you know, we need you to work with us on this, please. Thank you. Thank you both very much for um, the introduction and a very clear one. I think you've been so clear that actually uh, there aren't so many questions there for us to, to take on. It, the, uh, the, the videos were great. So that was, I think that really gave a really good overview of how to, how to operate the platform. Um, and it does look like a brilliant resource for the sector. So I'm really excited to see um, how it can increase the uh, kind of connections and, and make some things happen. Um, and yeah, lots of comments in the chat mentioning also that how, how well presented. So um, uh, an obvious one to start with, um, which uh, I'll pick up on, um, is somebody, Phil, has asked, 
um, about whether people might kind of join the platform who would be able to help with grant applications. So I think that's probably a good question, which um, maybe has a broader answer than just that particular angle on it, which is um, how you planning to find volunteers and, and, and whether you think that, that they will cover a broad sort of spectrum of skills and things. Um, that kind of thing, if you could maybe go into that a little bit more so people can understand the kinds of people they might be able to access over time. Yeah, of course. And I don't know if you can, I think I've shared my screen with noises and I don't know if you've been able to hear a few notifications. I think that's people joining the platform. So I think that's a good sign. <laughs> um, I've had a few just now, which is great. Um, but yeah, as I said before, we're kind of tackling it in a few different ways. Um, being um, in the position that we are, we're lucky to be very well linked with um, naturally people who are very skilled. So I mentioned the Octopus Energy and Mid Counties Cooperative link. Um, and then the pro bono link is going to be um, quite key as well. So that would be working with a plethora of organisations um, that would like to dedicate their time to community energy and that can range in skills. Again, it's dependent on the opportunities that you post. So it's important that you post an opportunity. We can see what skills you need and then we'll actively go out and find people within our networks and find people that we're speaking to to bring them closer to you. So essentially, it's a bit of a weak answer maybe, but it can be any skill um, and we'll work to try and get those all together, whichever skills best suit you. Um, Michaela, I don't know if you want to add anything onto that. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, if, if this is where we kind of yeah need your help. So yeah, if, if fundraising is a skill that you're after, please put that as a skill requirement. And like Amelia said, we'll go and do some outreach to, to find suitable volunteers. Good. Um, that's helpful. Um, so another question has come through about connecting to other volunteer platforms. So um, I uh, I mean I know from Sheffield that we have a kind of local volunteer. Um, board and kind of service thing um, but I, I, it sounds like there are other platforms the person in the chat has mentioned one that's called reach volunteering and um, so yeah just I guess it would be interesting to know whether you sort of plan to try and link this into other volunteering um, services that the uh, boards or other services yeah absolutely and it came up whilst we were doing our research as well because we wanted to make sure there was a real need for a community energy dedicated one um, but we are definitely going to look at how we can bring in connect into those platforms that's still kind of being worked out and molded. Um, it might be that we have conversations with those platforms and see how that works best. It might be that we can link up the opportunities to bring them on there, but it's being molded. It's definitely something that's kind of in our plan with our um, soft launch plan as we go through that. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely try and get something linked between like reach and um all of the other amazing volunteering platforms as well thank you um so at the moment i don't have other platform related questions i don't think um so yeah would you like me to ask a couple of questions that have come through that are more general unity related questions yeah of course feel free um so the first one, um, which uh, is relates to something that you mentioned earlier, is about the Powering Communities Fund. Um, I wonder maybe if this is just an opportunity for you to talk further about that. Um, the question from Dave was um, whether the fund would pay for feasibility studies or development work or whether it is only related to capital costs. Um, so that sort of, uh, I think that invites you to, to expand a little on the, on the fund and tell people about it. Amazing. I'll pass over to Michaela, who's the pro on this. That's OK. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, yeah, so the, the grant facility, the Power and Communities Fund, that is kind of, you know, short grant, um, small amounts of grant funding. And that has been used for such a variation of, of projects. It could it's range from kind of agrovoltaics to kind of youth summits, education, some kind of thermal camera imaging. So it's a real range. So the, the, the Power and Communities Fund is in a, a smaller allotted amount of cash and that could be used for whatever, providing you're kind of, you submit your application and it's successful. Um, we've got an independent um, kind of board that review the applications and we narrow it down to the ones that we think are best suited to, to, to warrant a grant. The Kickstart Loan Facility, that's the bigger part, that's the 1.5 million and that is a loan. So at the moment that is very much catered for the, the construction phase and so once the feasibility, the grid connection, the planning, etc., has all been approved. Um, and the idea is some groups might want to do their share raise kind of 
once construction has started or whatever. So it's just to enable speed. So rather than having to wait for share raise to be completed, you can get cracking if, for instance, you know, you've got a project on schools that need to happen over a set period of the summer holidays. That's the kind of focus. So at the moment, not for feasibility, unfortunately, because um, as you can imagine, that's a riskier aspect and we're not a bank. Um, we're very much doing this to try and help the sector. So hopefully in the future, that could be something we, we look to do but at the moment now. Hello. Um, and the other question, I think, probably relates to the, uh, the the second part of what you were just talking about in terms of the larger facility. Um, the question was about whether a community interest company can apply for it, I think, um, or whether it's better coming from a community benefit society. So that's, I guess, a little bit of just about eligibility there. Yeah, in terms of eligibility, so we have a lot, an application form. So the you know it's kind of it depends on the project um it's primarily focused on an energy generation asset so if the you know it's going to be kind of community owned we know there's different kind of community energy groups can be cooperatives or community benefit societies so we know there's different shapes and forms so i think in that scenario it's probably either best to have um a chat so please reach out and um, we've also got a bit of a form so you can fill out a bit of a, a loose application to start with to get the ball rolling but um, yeah, it, it's it's open to, to groups that are doing community energy projects, and there's not always exactly a clear tick box for the how you qualify that. So yeah, fairly open to discussion on that. Lovely, thanks. And um, that does conclude the questions that we've had through. Um, so unless any last ones pop up. Um, I think that probably uh, means a successful introduction to the platform, getting lots of positive comments from people who are talking about how the, uh, the, the what they've seen today um, is something that the sector needs and that they think will be useful to them. So I think um, definitely goes a really good start to the, uh, the, the, the platform's sort of uh, life and its contribution to the sector. Um, brilliant. So uh, just one last thing from me, which is to mention that um, Community Energy England, who are uh, partnered with Unity today to bring you this event, um, we're a membership network, um, so please do consider joining if any of, if any of you who are on um, the call today are not members. Um, this kind of collaboration and support with stakeholders, um, as well as bringing members together and people within the network, um, that kind of activity is really what, what we're about. So um, if you'd like to be part of that, please do consider joining us. Um, you'll find all the information about that on our website. Um, whilst I've been saying that, someone's popped up with a question. So um, yeah, back to you, Amelia, on the platform. Can it be, uh, can it be filtered to location? Um, I, I presume so, but maybe you could tell us a little bit more about how people can focus in on, on making sure that their volunteers that they look for are, are where they are. Yeah, of course. I think two elements to that. The first is, yeah, absolutely. Um, as you saw in the demo, when I typed in marketing in the search bar, you could just type in your location and then it'll ping up um, any references to that location in the volunteering thread. Um, and then also if you post that on your op uh, volunteering opportunity as well, then people can look through. I think it's also worth noting that um, it's worth seeing whether your opportunity can be remote because there might be people who might not necessarily be able to actually get to the site or um, work from an office. Could that be something they could do from home? Obviously, a lot of people are set up to do that now. Um, so yeah, just bear in mind whether it can be remote because you might immediately unlock yourself to more volunteers with a more variation of skills. Um, but yes, you can definitely um, see who's in the same location as you. Lovely, thanks. And that's a yeah, good reminder that whilst community energy obviously is, uh, is all about place and it's all about people, um, it, it's, a, it's a nationwide movement it's bringing people um, into your group to volunteer who have the skills that you need but don't live where you are is a great way to make connections um, and expand the movement across the country because all of those skills sharing, somebody that volunteers with you might then decide they want to start a community energy organisation where they live. So um, that's all, all, all to the good. Um, Brilliant. Yes. So I, I guess I'll hand over to uh, Michaela or Amelia to, to, to conclude there, I think. And if last, last comments from you to, um, to draw the event to a close. Yeah, I think just a huge thank you for joining this soft launch. It's been really great and really exciting to showcase it to you. We've been working hard in the background, so it feels like a little bit of a relief to get it out to you and 
um, make sure that it starts to help you now. Um, and as I said, it's a two way conversation. We would love your feedback. Um, so anything um, ne positive, negative, anything, we're super up for it. And yeah, we're keen to have conversations with you. So if you did want to drop us an email, um, my email again is amelia at unity.coop and we can just keep that conversation going and help with maybe any barriers or any sticky points that you find. Um, but yeah, just thank you so much for dedicating your time to coming and watching this today. We're really, really appreciative of it and hopefully connect with you soon. Thank you. I just want to say a very quick thank you as well to Amelia because Amelia's been the driving force um, of this project. So a huge thank you to, for Amelia for uh, yeah, driving this forward. So thank you. And thank you all for joining. And yeah, we really look forward to hearing your feedback and seeing where we can take Community Energy Connect and hopefully reach new audiences. So thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you to you both. Thank you for everyone for joining today. Um, it's really great to see the positive comments, and um, we we hope this will form part of our network. We'll be we'll be uh, promoting it widely, of course, um, within the CEE network. Um, please do tell other people about it. As I mentioned, this will go on to YouTube, so it's a little intro, and then um, I'm sure that Michaela and Amelia will will put some of those video resources and the kind of guides up as well um, in other formats. So we'll we'll make sure that's all shared. Um, and yeah, hopefully this can uh, spread across the sector and, and lead to some great new connections. Um, again, as I said, don't forget Community Energy Fortnight still underway. So we have the ventilation retrofit event tomorrow. Um, that concludes the week. But again, YouTube is where you'll find a lot of events from this fortnight. Um, ones like this one um, about a lot of exciting new things going on in the sector. So um, thank you all for being here today, being part of uh, Community Energy Fortnight and being part of the sector as a whole. So goodbye for now.